Hey everyone, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. I really don't know where to begin. I wasn't even going to talk about this, but this situation must be addressed. The palace is once again under allegations of racism, but this time not from Harry and Meghan, but from this person, Ngozi Fulani, who many are calling a paid plant. At first I was like, hmm, this may be a reach, but no, this woman is probably a paid plant because how the situation went is actually quite insane and that's why I felt the need to talk about it. From fake names to a vendetta exposed, this story is a roller coaster. So Ngozi Fulani attended a DV violence charity at Buckingham Palace. King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla invited her because she is the founder of the charity Sista Space. She then took to Twitter to write, Mixed feelings about yesterday's visit to Buckingham Palace. Ten minutes after arriving, a member of staff, Lady SH, aka Lady Susan Hase, approached me, moved my hair to see my name badge. The conversation below took place. The rest of the event is a blur. She posted a photo of herself at the event and a transcript that she wrote up from how the interaction went down with Lady Susan Hussey, the late queen's lady-in-waiting and Prince William's godmother. Let me read the transcript for you guys real quick. Where are you from? To which Ngozi says, sister space. No, where do you come from? We're based in Hackney. No, what part of Africa are you from? I don't know, they didn't leave any records. Well, you must know where you're from. I spent time in France. Where are you from? Here, UK. No, but what nationality are you? I am born here and am British. No, but where do you really come from? Where do your people come from? My people? Lady, what is this? Oh, I can see I'm going to have a challenge getting you to say where you're from. When did you first come here? Lady, I am a British national. My parents came here in the 50s when, oh, I knew we'd get here in the end. You're Caribbean. No, lady, I am of African heritage, Caribbean descent, and British nationality. Oh, so you're from da da da. I'm going to talk about that interaction in detail, but for now, let's focus on the aftermath. After she posted that, it went viral on Twitter and it led everyone to scream, I knew the palace was racist and Meghan tried to warn us. Following that, Lady Susan Hussey resigned and a spokesperson for Prince William said, Racism has no place in our society. The comments were unacceptable and it is right that the individual has stepped aside with immediate effect, they said. There's a lot to talk about here, especially with how swift the palace moved. It led people to think, well, are they hiding something? I personally don't think they're hiding something. I think that they just don't want to face any more allegations of racism. And so they are doing everything that is politically correct. And at the same time, I think it's wrong because it just enables this type of behavior. What behavior, you may ask? Well, let's talk about it. There are a multitude of reasons as to why people believe that Ngozi Fulani is a paid plant. Paid by whom, you may ask? None other than our D-list actress, Meghan Markle. Before I get into that, I want to tell you the history behind black people, people of color, or indigenous people who get asked the question, but no, where are you really from? Oftentimes when they're asked that question by someone who's white and oftentimes in a position of power, it can be racist because it promotes the ideology that, well, you can't be American looking like that, or in any context, whether that's a person being British, Australian, German, and so on. It promotes the rhetoric that Americans, Brits, or Europeans in general look a certain way. So there is some context behind that argument. With that being said, that doesn't seem to be the case for Ngozi Fulani, or should I say, Marlene Headley. I don't know how much credibility a woman who chose to change her name to a more indigenous name, who shows up at a palace charity event, after calling the royals racist for over a year and targeting them on social media, is someone we should take as credible. Ngozi Fulani was born Marlene Headley, but has since adopted an African name. Why would you do that? 
Dr. Rakib Ahsan, who has a PhD in social integration and is a research analyst and cultural writer, wrote, So it appears that Ngozi Fulani's real name is Marlene Headley. Do wonder whether much of this is about an individual who is being rather defensive over the fact that she took on and adopted a cultural identity she wasn't necessarily born into. Is this a form of appropriation? Marlene, aka Ngozi, is a British native born to parents from Barbados. Barbados is considered to be part of the Caribbean, but is also located in Central America. And her parents are named Gladstone and Mildred Headley. You can't get whiter than that. So as to why she's cosplaying as a Nigerian woman with a native Nigerian Igbo name is crazy to me. Remember, Mrs. I'm 43% Nigerian. Hmm, maybe both Marlene and Megs were part of the same club. The sad part is that she was invited by both the king and queen consort. In 1997, Ngozi met the then Prince of Wales when Charles visited the Limelight, a nightclub in London's West End, and here they are in a photo together. At the time, she was a drummer in Imashi, a group specializing in African music, which had received money from the Prince's Trust. So not only have you known these people for over two decades, they gave you money, they invited you to the palace, you are on camera having a nice interaction with the queen consort, but then you go on Twitter targeting some 80-year-old woman after claiming that compulsive lying Megan was a victim of DV by her in-laws? This crazy woman literally tweeted, Our charity supports black women DV survivors. I can't stay silent about this. I admire Megan for speaking out. According to a clear definition, it seems Megan is a survivor of DV from her in-laws. P.S. I'm glad hypocrite peers left ITV. And then included a photo of her with the then Prince Charles from 1997. Not even Megan claimed DV, which is a serious accusation to make and belittling it to define a privileged failed Hollywood actress who was mad that she couldn't continue her influencer dreams when she married into an institution is disgusting. How dare you compare, hey Megan, you're breaking royal protocol by not wearing pantyhose to literal survivors of DV. By the way, I keep saying DV just in case YouTube is gonna flag it if you say the full word. This is like the Amber Heard trial all over again and how she discredited the Me Too movement when she was the one on candid camera talking about how she beats Johnny Depp and starts physical fights. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous and this will bring me to my next argument, which is that not everything is supposed to be taken as racism and in doing so, you are belittling and taking away from actual racist issues. But before I get into that, let's talk about the rest of Marlene's tweets. In December 2021, she took to Twitter to say, 16 days of activism at Kensington Royal, the right to privacy. Megan refused to ignore obvious victimization and a relentless campaign based on her race. A stiff upper lip approach will do nothing to change this historic culture which people see but ignore. Well done, Megan. It's funny how Megan herself, nor her puppy Harry, can tell us who from their family made the racial accusation of, are you guys ready? What color do you think your baby is going to be? Mind you, a normal question asked by literally all mixed couples. A normal sense of curiosity, something that is discussed today by Meghan's own fans who say that her genes barely competed with Harry, considering their kids look exactly like him. Should I claim they are being racist and taking away from a black woman? This argument is ridiculous. Go outside and touch some grass. I literally know so many different interracial couples spanning from black, white, Asian, Arab, everything. And that question has always come up in innocence and fun at dinners, bridal showers, gender reveals. It's a normal question, but Ngozi, you're right. Well done, Megan, for belittling what racism actually is just so it can benefit your victim agenda whilst at the same time you do nothing for the black community. Here's another one of her deranged tweets. This place is full of trauma for black women. It's awful. Pregnancy didn't save Megan from constant attack. The media have gone after Hackney Alba in such a savage way. The world let it happen, even joined in. All those who say Black Lives Matter should step forward now. What a sad and delusional woman. What does Hackney Abbott, a British politician who's a member of parliament for Hackney North and Stoke Newington, have to do with Megan being pregnant? 
Newsflash, every politician is eaten up alive by the media. Just look at what happened and what was said and done to Hillary Clinton. You don't get more white and powerful than the Clintons. When you are a politician, everything you say and do is under serious scrutiny because you have some power to make an impact. Therefore, this affects the general public. And then her most deranged tweet of all. Harry and Meghan won't be allowed on the balcony? They're in a completely different category to Andrew. He's linked to sexual crime. Harry married and had children with a black woman. An all-exclusive white balcony. The only black people banned. Racism. This is what a crazy person with delusions sounds like. First of all, only senior working royals and their children were present. Prince Andrew, who was stripped of his titles, may I add, did not attend. Second of all, Thirst Central Harry and Meghan quit their royal responsibilities and moved to California. So why would they be on the balcony? Let's talk about privileged. If you aren't a working senior royal, why should you stand on the balcony and get applauded by everyone? Take work out of the equation. If you went to a different country, sold your family out to the media, but then came running back to your grandmother's historic event for your own benefit, which is to get photographed, why would anyone from that family, whom you harassed and berated in public, want you on the balcony next to them. I'm sorry that everyone seems to think that the royal family is a doormat that Harry and Meghan can continue to step on. They are allowed to act accordingly to Meghan and Harry's behavior. Someone also pointed out how Ngozi worked with the same photographer who worked with Meghan, so make of that what you will. First of all, the entire alleged conversation with Lady Susan Hussey was Ngozi, aka Marlene, provoking the wrong answer. Lady Susan Hussey was asking her where she's from, to which she replies the charity organization and then says, no, where do you come from? Because, sweetheart, you cannot show up to an event in cultural clothing, from the necklace to the dress to the crown to the style of hair, and get confused as to why someone is asking you where are you from. If she was in a pantsuit and this conversation happened, then fine, it would seem to be racially motivated or at the very least with a racial undertone, but that wasn't the case here. She showed up with a cultural dress and African cowrie sheets that are very significant to African culture, but couldn't even be proud of her heritage to say where she's really from. Instead, she seems to reference slavery when she said, I don't know, they didn't really leave any records. Girl, your parents are literally from Barbados. On top of that, she had no problem talking about her heritage before and very much knew of these records when she wrote on an official page, my parents came to London from the Caribbean and most of their children were born here. She even said that her dad taught her about their connection to Africa by introducing her to the Nigerian singer, Fila Kuti. So she had an opportunity to share about her heritage, but didn't. Kembi Onobi writes, Ngozi Fulani went to Buckingham Palace and an 80-something-year-old woman asked her about her origin. She couldn't mention Nigeria. She couldn't brag about being a proud Igbo woman. She was replying with single words and memorizing everything the woman said. Is Ngozi a British name? One user writes, So she changed her name to sound more African and dresses up to look what she thinks Africans wear, but then asked where she was from due to that name and those clothes and she got offended? You couldn't make this up. Is this like Hilaria Baldwin? Since when is asking someone where are you from, especially when you were wearing cultural clothes at an event that wasn't a cultural event by any means, considered racist? Is this what we are reducing human interaction to? Some people are now even saying that Ngozi was wearing a recording device and she was trying to get a racist reaction out of Camilla. She spoke with Camilla and their interaction was on camera, it seemed absolutely lovely, and since she couldn't say something about her, she supposedly found someone else. Do you guys believe that? This coming out and causing drama the same day of Harry and Meghan's Netflix trailer release benefits our favorite thirsty couple in many ways. One of them being credits to Meghan's story that the royal family was racist toward her. Now the US media is running with this narrative saying that Meghan warned us. Now that the spotlight is on sister space, receipts have come to light accusing the charity of being a fraud. 
One Google review from eight months ago writes, This place is a con and uses charity money to fund holidays and personal expenses. They act as if they are helping victims but work illegally and make matters worse. I will be taking them to the cleaners and complaining to the charity commission. Do not trust that Ngozi and Dijani. They are family too. They present to the media as if they are interested in domestic matters just for financial gain. Stay away and access a more universal service like the National DV Helpline. Another person wrote, I will never forget for my whole life how Ngozi treated me, how she made me feel. It's worse than any other professional or charity worker. I was shocked. I needed DV help. She left me worse off. I got attacked, went into a refuge with her not helping me because I have privilege. Now, the issue of where is my money going has come to play with people saying that the income went from virtually nothing to $350,000 in four years. The sole paid employee of the charity is Ngozi Fulani, who receives $65,000 tax-free. And there was a further $180,000 paid out in expenses which are not accounted for. There are no records of where the rest of the money went to. And here's a spreadsheet alleging about the finances of the charity, Sister Space. So that brings me to the end of this video. Be sure to leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you team Ngozi or are you against her? Let me know. This whole story was quite shocking to be honest. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. Follow us on our social media. And as always, I'll see you next time.